The science of derby, the science of derby. Let's learn something new. Hi. Today we're going to talk about that stop that everyone loves, everyone wants to do, and many people need to improve, the hockey stop. It's cool, it's sharp, it's strong, it's great, and it's a little bit difficult. Um, many skaters struggle with it, including this one. When I started, it took me years to figure out my hockey stop, and I only succeeded by really breaking it down, analyzing it with science, and figuring it out. Um, so I'm going to share some of my tips and tricks with you. First of all, you need your one-footed plow stop. That is, you need to be able to control your weight, get it on that back foot, and be able to start the slide on your front foot, which is gonna turn into your outside foot in this hockey stop. If you can't get that, that slide, work on your plow first, I promise. Um, There's some people that just kinda take a bunch of momentum and turn and hope they stop. That's not the way to do it. You're not gonna have the control, you're not gonna have the strength, the precision, anything you need. Maybe on some floors with some wheels on Thursdays, when it's sunny outside, you can stop, but that's not what you want. So if I'm not just twisting and, and trying my hardest to stop suddenly, what am I doing? First, I'm literally gonna be doing a one-footed plow stop. I'm gonna be getting that outside foot, that leg in front to slide. As soon as it's sliding, I'm going to take my other leg, my inside leg, and I'm going to join it. Once they're both sliding, I'm going to sit into that and really get my weight down into my heels, and that's going to give me this really strong, sharp hockey stop. One thing worth mentioning is that here we're initiating the slide on the outside foot and then joining it with the inside foot. Now, Ice hockey skaters and some derby skaters, especially those with ice hockey experience, can um, do a hockey stop where you initiate the slide with the inside foot. That's totally fine, and if that's how you're doing it, that's great. I find it's much easier for skaters to initiate the slide on the outside foot because we practice the one-footed plow stop all the time, so that, that muscle coordination is already in our bodies. Secondly, if you initiate with your inside foot, um, a lot of skaters get confused with the power slide um, where we do a transition before we stop and the, the muscle memory gets all confused and it tends to be half power slide, half hockey stop and none of anything. So in my opinion, for derby skaters, initiating with the outside foot is the way to go. So that's what we're going to do here. Here's the breakdown. Step one, I initiate the slide with my outside foot. Almost all of my weight's on the back foot, allowing me to overcome the coefficient of static friction and get that outside foot sliding. Step two, I begin to transfer the weight to that outside foot that is already sliding. Step three, I bring that inside foot to join the outside foot and I really sit down into my heels to drive that weight into the ground and to get a really nice clean stop. Let's talk about the weight transfer in step two. When you're first learning, it's helpful to break this down and think of in the first step, all of your weight being on the back foot, get that outside foot sliding, and then transfer all of your weight to that outside sliding foot, and then bring the inside foot to join and the weight will be 50-50. So 100% back, 100% on the outside foot, and then 50-50. As you tighten this up and the movements get closer and closer together, what's actually happening is you do start with 100% on your back foot, but as soon as that outside foot is sliding and you bring your inside foot in, you're already splitting the weight between your two feet. So it's not 100, 150, it's more like 100, 90, 80, 70, 50. So as you're sliding and bringing that foot in, you're already equalizing the weight between the two feet to get that really nice, tight, screechy hockey stop. We're gonna start with just a simple one-footed plow stop. Once I've stopped, I'm gonna have most of my weight on my back leg, a little bit of weight on the front leg, I've come to a complete stop, and I'm gonna slowly transition my weight to the other leg, the outside leg, and replace it. I'm gonna do a regular, single-footed plow stop. I'm stopped. Then I'm just gonna transfer 
pick up that leg and replace it. So at first, be disciplined. Allow yourself to pick it up and replace it. Feel that transfer of weight. If you can't do this, you can't do a nice clean hockey stop. So there's no point rushing through it. Pick it up, replace it. Plow stop, pick it up, replace it. Plow stop, pick it up, replace it. If you're really eager to get into your hockey stops, this drill can seem really slow and not useful. But trust me, it's essential. And coaches, if your students are getting bored with it, find ways to make it interesting because they need to be able to get this. They need to be able to slide and then keep this weight transfer. So a lot of times what I'll give is the next step is once they're able to do this plow stop, keep the level of their head the same. Meaning don't allow people to bob up and down or if it's yourself coaching yourself, don't allow yourself to be lifting up and down like this. You wanna keep that same level and replace the foot. That's gonna start training what we want in the end, which is this nice, low plie into your heels. So the next step, once you're able to plow nicely and transfer that weight while maintaining the same level, is to start moving that second foot to meet the first quicker and quicker and quicker to make your hockey stop tighter and tighter and tighter. So I'm just gonna do my plow stop and join my second foot. Gonna do my plow stop, join that second foot. Eventually what's gonna happen with your hockey stops so you're going to get closer and closer together, and you'll essentially be doing them at the exact same time. So my both feet are going to come together at the same time. And that's when you're going to get that nice, crisp, clean stop. And so that's really it for the hockey stop. Being able to break it down to get that first slide happening and then join it with the second foot that's your hockey stop. Then it's just a matter of getting the right position, finding ways to transfer that weight more aggressively into your heels. Now, if you're ready to level up a little bit, or coaches, if you're coaching a mixed group, and some people are just really comfy trying to get this plow, but other students are ready to move on, here's a great way to level this diagonal hockey stop exercise up. And that is to think about what comes next. Always a good thing to do when you're um, teaching a drill and you want to level it up for some skaters is think about what's the next movement and how can I link that? Um, so in this case, we're doing a nice clean hockey stop on the line. What's next, we want to sprint to the other side of the line and we really want to work on that crossover and strong force with the inside leg, which is going to push us to propel us across the track. So that'll look a little bit something like this. I'm going to head to the line and do a nice hockey stop. Push off. Do a crossover and push off. Here's what it looks like down the track. I'm going to exaggerate a little bit the footwork. Do a hockey stop. Crossover. Hockey stop. Crossover. Hockey stop. Crossover. And how do you make that as clean and connected and as powerful as possible? And that's your hockey stop. Once you've got it, it pairs really nicely with all sorts of things. You can practice it just about any time in roller derby. Um, it pairs really nicely with backwards plows or with um, power slides or really any stopping drill. You can practice it in a wall. Instead of plowing all the time now and then, throw in a quick hockey stop. See what that does to your jammer behind you. Thanks for your time and attention. I can't wait to see those nice, beautiful hockey stops out on the track. The science of derby, the science of derby, let's learn something new.